All right, well, we should be streaming now. Let's find out if we have audio, though. So, uh, do we have hey, audio out yes, there now? Yes, there's audio there this time. <laughs> All right. Well, we're not going to reintroduce. We can we can do that at the end again. You know so... who we are. You love us. You've seen these episodes before. Hi, I'm Jen. Hi, I'm Fren. Hi, I'm Tristan. Kill him! No. Oh God! <laughs> this is Bird. I'm not DMing tonight, though. <laughs> Nice. Okay, so last episode, we got to Restonford here to stop in a, a murder. Unfortunately, murder happens. Uh, and so what else happened last episode, and, and where are we going today, gang? Uh, we tried to stop a murder because we thought the wizard was going to be murdered. Then the but wizard it turns out up. it wasn't him. It was going to okay. be the wife of the person who was murdered right at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Now I think we're off to see the daughter. We're off to see the daughter. The yeah. daughter who is not the wizard. I mean, it's really in our best interest to allow these murders to happen because the only way we're employed is if they keep occurring and we keep solving them. That's so, true. So, There's a well, weird disincentive I'm, to, yeah. I mean, we don't get paid by the murder. How do you know? What's your deal? That I would be the assassin <laughs> end of it. Yeah. So I actually, I get paid by the pound of person murdered. So I've actually been like really seeding a lot of delicacies into these communities. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the party just hands uh, Richard's character money for just no reason. No reason. This is your share. Don't ask why. <laughs> nice. So yes, indeed. The uh, Baron Grellis's wife, uh, Fairwind, was killed. Uh, the information came out this morning. Um, a guard came to uh, the magic user's house that you're staying in right now and let everyone know that apparently that was uh, Telish's target. So I think we ended last session with uh, the, the mage being summoned and you guys tagging along. Right. If we got that far. All right. So, yeah. We had a um, fake drunken interlude there, too, from our uh, druid. There's that. I, <laughs> huge the, charisma uh, rolls. Yeah. Yes. Isn't the assistant girl with us, too? She still? is. Yes, she yeah. is as well. I should probably open up that, because apparently I will need to be referring back to these NPCs from the other module. <laughs> Look, we don't I thought know I was names. done with it that. It doesn't matter if you yeah. don't know their names. I remember their names. All of their names. There you go. <laughs> all right. The majority of us don't know your na their names. <laughs> all right, there. Um, so when you arrive at the castle, now there is... Uh, I just put a little handout on the screen there that you can see the general layout of. You guys are coming through uh, the front gates here. The guards are uh, letting you in uh, since you are following the mage are we and... meant to be seeing yeah i'm not seeing that oh you guys don't see the handout I, i've got i it. see the map i've got Which, it. the rest right, of you the don't one? see the castle map though right yeah i've got the castle map we got the castle one yeah ground yeah, level it was a pop-up did you close it ah no nah, i didn't uh, close anything but Rest there we go Sorry. Castle. i am obviously just not great with technology today <laughs> I think Whatever. everyone's kind of having a day today. I think it's, you're, you're it's, safe. It's a day. It's a day. So let's kill stuff. Uh, <laughs> so, you're, yeah, you're not exactly sure who uh, the mage has been summoned by or, or what reason. Uh, you can assume <laughs> what's going on with that. But you're invited along for this as he believes you might have some critical insight into uh, what's been going on here. So you guys are brought in. Uh, you're asked to wait out on the castle grounds. You see that there are a fair number of guards here. There's a guard posted at basically every entrance uh, to the castle. On the outside, you saw a fair number of people uh, basically set on watch. These are just um, citizens uh, issued pikes and are just kind of on watch on the grounds. So everything is a lot heightened like the the sense of expectation expectation here is really heightened um yeah can you know once we meet them offer them up the information about the assassin's guild and, and go from there like we we do have some information that may help the people calm down a bit once they know who's responsible that's good um uh, maybe it might not be a good idea to tell anyone about it 
Now you've got a moment here where you are um, uh, just no one directly listening to you. There's some people off to the side that uh, you know are watching what's going on, but they're not close enough to eavesdrop. So if you want to talk about what your strategy here is, if anything. Okay. So we're just going to talk to the orphan baroness, right? Yeah, we don't want to tell just anybody this information, but telling the people that matter seems like a good idea. Right, so who who would that entail, do you think? I mean, like, probably just our friends that helped us back in the other city, like the Abraham and them, or... Like... I mean, I think we should sound out the... <laughs> Baroness Orphan, just mm. to see whether it was her who was orchestrating it or not to become the Baron or Baroness. Well, but she... beyond that, I don't see why we shouldn't tell her. So she but can't specific... um, get anything unless she gets married, though, right? Didn't we? Is that something we heard? Before oh no, no, she can. She time? can. She can inherit the title. It's just that um, oh. mm -hmm. if she does okay. become married, uh, her husband would get the title. But she can. She can All rule. Right. <laughs> Did, did we ever hmm, I don't think we did I was next time I get the chance I might ask uh, if there are any suitors that have been pushing hard on her they, they might have had a reason to hire the assassin's guild hmm uh, um, Peltar is I mean you guys kind of talked to Peltar already last night early this morning so he's right. there with you and okay. um, he does have a bit of information he says uh, that the bishop of Restonford um Colton, he's the well, the abbot of Restonford. He serves the god Falcon. Um, has sent gifts recently, like a, a very low level wooing of the daughter. Um, it hadn't gotten to the point of uh, him presenting himself to the Baron and Baroness, but he has been sending gifts. Um, other than that, he uh, Peltar is unaware of any suitors, and generally. That becomes kind of public knowledge in a town this size. Um, okay. I'm going to dust off Grouch Wolf's clothes, kind of readjust his buttons so they're even, and like kind of smooth his hair out a little bit and make it look more presentable. I lean in and give a little sniff check. Oh, oh, God, oh. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll work on that part, but I mean... What? What part? Have you seen my fungus collection? Uh, no, no uh, we're gonna have to find. You want like, me to stand in? I got you. a pretty smile. Uh... <laughs> Just appropriately for the occasion, I accepted the fancy clothes. Yeah, yeah. So some of you are presentable in court, some are not. Um, as you're standing and waiting, uh, there are more people that are let in through the gates. Um, a few merchants you would guess by uh, their clothing they're certainly not uh, servants nor like laborers um, they just kind of look around one of them nods to Peltar uh, a few moments later um, Qualton uh, comes in and this is the Peltar kind of motions that this is the person he was just talking about and he's dressed in his he's still dressed in his uh, his robes and his uh, like shaw of authority uh, he has one servant that comes with him uh, he kind of just nods kind of icily towards Peltar. And uh, Peltar will just kind of, as an aside, tell you, our relations have not been the best. His church frowns upon those who study the art of magic. Oh, I've got double the reason not to like this dude. What's the difference? Well, his powers are granted by his benefactor, his deity. Mine are through hard one knowledge acquired over time very <laughs> not not granted let's just put it that way but isn't the end result still the same in uh, some cases it's, the result yeah, isn't got... always what's important I mean, yeah. I mean the Baroness big would have eventually inherited the title but the end result of her parents being dead is she inherits the title you <laughs> see the difference <laughs> catch you because of those big brains so do we wait until they give us audience or do we that's up to you her? it it looks like the guards had summoned several folks and they're kind of waiting till everyone's gathered but you do you i, I kind of <laughs> ask peltar if there's a way we can see her before these other people just because like 
Assassin's Guild and people could be anywhere and with anyone, you know. Frankly, what's the line of succession? She could be a target. Like there was there were assassins in the church at the She other could be town. an assassin on how old is she? 14. How old is Orphan Annie? She's fourteen. Okay. She she's could not. be a church even. Yeah, she's not. She's not. She's not I mean, if, if she was a target, why would they not take her out at the same time they were taking out the Lady Baroness? Well, they they oh. killed the first Baron on a separate <clears throat> moment as well. So maybe they just you know they like one thing at a time. Maybe they have ADHD and D. I'd like maybe they have a I'd, code they don't kill children. I'd like to ask Peltar um, what happens in the case of a child who inherits the throne. Oh, she is hardly a child. Um, Fourteen is sorry. Definitely... She can't drive a cart yet, can she? <laughs> she doesn't have her cart driving license. <laughs> she has a learner's permit. It's fine. Uh, I mean, <laughs> we have world conquerors that were younger than this in history. <laughs> yeah. what, who would what, she what? take her advice from? Is basically what I'm asking. There are members of the court that do provide advice from here, uh, here and there. Uh, the Baron never took their advice. Um, Baroness Fairwind, uh, while she was sequestered after her husband's death, uh, took little of their advice. Uh, it's mm. they are elected by the townsfolk to be to speak in their behalf. Uh, the royals will sometimes listen, often not. Okay. Uh, hearsay is that they had all been expelled from the castle after the Baron's death. Uh, no one's mm, been okay. able to get in to verify any of that, and I've been away. But what you're bringing up is is truly perhaps if we are able to see uh, her new majesty before the rest, that might be uh, a good thing to do. Let's let's approach the gates and see what can happen. At worst, we're turn away, turned away. So yes. Peltar motions yeah. you and they and he walks up to uh, the inner gates uh, where there are several guards standing out. <clears throat> all in plate, uh, having pikes. Uh, they look fairly well-trained. Uh, Peltar asks, uh, may we have an audience with... Uh... He pauses for a moment. Let's... <clears throat> her Majesty, as if he wasn't sure to use her given name or not, and so he decides to be politic about it. Um, the guards say we are instructed to wait until everyone is assembled. We're still awaiting. He looks over into the courtyard. One person. We just got uh, 500 biddies for good things only. <laughs> for good gray. things only. Only. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I guess this is a good moment to ask how many rerolls do we have with that so I can. Um, I think we had I'll... four at the end of last session. Okay. Who is, so who is a, appointed uh, themselves a re-roll master? I, I, I was counting last time, and I think <laughs> okay. I think it ended up at four, because right. we mostly okay. talked last game, and so, we had four at the start of it. So you yeah. guys can combine those if you look at the chart now. 200 bits will give you um, a, a re-roll of your hit dice if you need some hit points back, um, or okay. just use 100 for an automatic success. So if one of you will track that, please. Okay. Right. And is it still 100 is four re-rolls? Yes. Or, okay, mm -hmm. so... 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Cool. Yeah. Got it. Or We're just record how many bits uh, in case you want to combine them. Anyway, yeah. uh, Peltar looks to to you to see if you have anything that might persuade them as um, he doesn't want to give away anything that you might want to hold to yourselves. Um, I hmm. could make an attempt at trying to persuade them to let us in. You're awfully charming, Disney princess. God help us all. Um, under the guise of uh, we are we are very busy, and my understanding is this last person is actually uh, going to take forever to get here. So we'd like to get in now. Um, okay, so just so, just so I understand the tact. Um, you're busy people huffy. and shouldn't be I'm left huffy. to wait by the new baroness. <laughs> I'm huffy. And I'm just, no, no, by the guards, by the guards specifically, not by the baroness. I'm huffy uh, because the guards are getting oh, in my way. You're playing the guards if you knew how important this was. Gotcha. All right. Yes. Um, wow. So make me a charisma check. Okay. 
Oh my God, did it go through? Oh, oof. <laughs> I have, a... I'm so close. I have Do 18. It. Do it. Okay. Do it. Well, okay. that's not great. Uh, but it's still a success. Um, okay. He, one of the guards looks a little uncomfortable since you are dressed well um, as you took Peltar's uh, uh, clothing he had and washed mm -hmm. up and everything. It's like, uh, not knowing your title. Uh, lady, uh, we're very sorry, but these directions come directly from uh, the new ruler herself, uh, her majesty uh, herself. He, he stumbles a bit when he says, uh, oh, her majesty herself um and cannot be curtailed I'm, I'm quite afraid we can perhaps let you wait uh in the uh the ante room instead of out here if uh, this is the surroundings don't uh well, they're harming your sensibilities we well, who, can allow that who is it that we're waiting for who are we waiting for who is not here yet uh it's the guild leader uh he uh, he he was he was is he's stumbling uh i'm afraid i, I don't know his name uh, is his name lady. tristan <laughs> uh, no Brisket. no yeah. okay <laughs> mm. oh that leader. reminds me before we go any further um as you know that Tellish does disguise himself quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Can you guys add your intelligence and wisdom, whatever those numbers together? And let me just go through the list and ask you what that number is, okay? Um, because the way the assassin's ability of disguise works <laughs> is depending on what that combination is, it is easier or harder to detect him. So the raw stat, not the bonuses. Correct, the actual stat. Uh, so added together. Or added together, added together. I am... 30. Okay, Jen, you're at 30. All right. Brown Wolf is at 27. 27. Okay. Tabor's at 20. 20. Okay. I'm at 22, as in 2 2. Okay. Aww. And Richard. Kristen is also at 30. All right. Okay. So just if you are. Just happen to be in a scene where Tellish is uh, disguised. I don't know what to roll. <laughs> cool. <laughs> not to say he's still here. Who knows? Mm -hmm, Who knows? Mm -hmm. he, he Definitely be not Bert. Yeah. Disguised as that dog. He's the, in the dumb corner. dumb who's gonna walk through last. <laughs> My God, oh, I'm here. My name is Tellish. I don't even care. I'm a guild leader. Blah blah blah. No, he's the carpet was standing on. Um. Mm -hmm. So the guard like is saying the guild leader that is above like the the fishing trade here is who they're waiting for. Okay. He doesn't um, know the name because, uh, well, the prior guild member retired and a new one was recently sworn in. He doesn't know his name. Okay. Is that retired um, or retired? <laughs> it retired due to age. Uh, he stepped uh, down from his okay. position. Um, I would I would turn to the group and say like, maybe if this person turns out to be legit and we can trust them this leader of the guild maybe we could ask them more about our friend who lives in the attic if you remember oh her. yeah yeah we might be able to ask her because the head like head fisherman etc yeah um, what was her to... name i think it was b story i think was her name b story yes that's it um i do we want to go to the antechamber or do we want to stay out here and observe? Let's stay out here and keep I, an eye out. Yeah. I guess we can stay out here, guard. Thank you. All right. Just as me. you're finishing the conversation, one more person walks through uh, the front gates but by herself, um, just dressed in just plain jerkins, like uh, hmm. um, you know, heavy workwear. Doesn't look like she has also taken any time to clean herself up. She's, you know, the people that are near her as she enters kind of put their nose in the air and sniff and just kind of turn to the side as if uh <laughs> she is beneath them but she just steps in crosses her arms and just yells out to the closest guard uh similar to what you did but with a bit more it's like i ain't got all day if her highness wants to see me she can do it now i will marry her <laughs> i uh I, I point to her and then point to, to my bad clothes. And I say, they've been jerking us around all morning. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 
Uh, well, she looks over in your direction, uh, and she gives like a, a, a like a half smile and nods at Peltar. Peltar <laughs> and just chuckles a little bit and shakes his head. Um, it surprises me that they elected her, but she is a good choice, a very good choice. Oh, that's yes, the, she's yeah. the new guild master. Yeah, I so like I'm gonna marry her. <laughs> I'm a white uh, hard. <laughs> so yeah, with her arriving, the guards open the gates and everybody uh, is a bit in. Um, so on the inside here, let's just go ahead and switch maps. Do, 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 do. This one isn't as pretty, but it will do. Hey. Okay. So you guys were all waiting. Uh, can you see? Yeah. Okay. You should be able to see that. Do you see the grounds? Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So you're all waiting out here. And again, it's a fairly pleasant place. I mean, the gardens are well manicured and everything. But when they take you in to uh, nine right here, uh, so you have the doors and this inside is kind of a waiting room. Uh, they take you down a long hall and then into a room. Okay. okay. Outside the room and in the halls are several more guards room. Uh, inside the room, um, Andrea, uh, the new ruler of the realm, is seated behind a long desk, and she has several guards just around her. She looks slightly terrified. She looks like she hasn't uh, slept uh, well in the last evening. or uh, She honestly looks a little sick. Uh, her, her skin is very pale. She's got mm -hmm. bruising under her eyes, and uh, she's already got a cup of wine in front of her. Uh, she bids everyone enter guards have everyone take a seat uh you do notice that um qualton uh, gives like a very deep bow uh making sure to show off the finery of his robes and how well it's made as he spreads his hands out um uh, and then takes a seat this is the suitor guy right? yeah he's uh He's the suitor. He's also the abbot of Restonford. Right. Uh, he's the and just so that we can all be squicked out, how old is he? <clears throat> um, he's not that old. Uh, late 20s, early 30s. Mm. And a 14-year-old. Right. I'm going to, mm. instead of bowing or anything, I'm just going to kind of like wave a little. I'm only a couple years older than her. <laughs> and so I'm just going to like wave and smile and just sit with the group. Uh, uh, knowing that Tristan hates my puns, I'm going to lean in and whisper, the abbot in this castle is low. Abbot castle low. <laughs> Peltar waves to all of you and says, uh, these are companions of mine that may have information <laughs> that you wish to hear, Highness. Uh, he bows a little, and then he kind of like motions for you to introduce yourselves. Um... Hi, I'm I'm Grown Wolf. I'm I'm a bit of a wizard, not quite as good as Peltar, but I know some things, and uh, my my friends and I uh, know some things that may uh, interest you as well. I'll let them introduce themselves, though. I'm and he's kind of giving like a nod, just like okay, <laughs> it's a fiber, just not all right. So <laughs> I'm Odette of Lionwood. You probably have not heard of me yet i'm working on being a disney princess first i have to invent disney <laughs> and a new kingdom uh i'm npc i'm just uh just a humble adventurer i am their traveling companion tristan uh, Peltar winces a little bit as <laughs> you give your introduction. Says, um, they're not used to uh, being in court, Your Highness, but I can attest to their usefulness, uh, potentially very useful to what has befallen the castle. Um, she kind of looks up when you say, uh, This is to Odette. Uh, 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 lady, where from? I'm not familiar with that kingdom. The Lionwood? The Lion Wood is that on the Lindra Magic Isles? Kingdom, or the Magic Kingdom? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> uh, uh, so you are all uh, uh, guests here. Then you are not from the Linder Isles. Uh, none of you. We're not from the Linder Isles. No. She looks a little bit 
she gives a, a funny look to Peltar, and he just he just shakes his head, says, "Trust, trust, your highness, that I would not bring them here if they didn't have useful knowledge." Um, so she takes a big gulp of her wine, um, wipes her, wipes her face with the back of her hand, uh, staining the garments that she's got on. And she just kind of stands up behind the desk and she's trying to look fierce. Um, and she looks at everybody around and says, you are my war counsel. I need to know what has happened here. First, my father, my mother, both dead somehow. Uh, when she says that, and I'm, I'm going to say, and by someone, and um, that's why Pelta like brought us here, the someone part. Murder, then? Is that what you're saying? They were both Sorry, murdered. I, yep. Yes. I mm -hmm. have no signs of struggle upon their bodies, yet you have knowledge of their murderer. You say. Um, everybody can make me a wisdom check. Okay. Yep. I crit. I crit my wisdom. Okay. Uh, nobody in the room... Get it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Tristan's like... Eh, I like you, your tablecloth. You <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I am. We all are. It's society. <laughs> nobody else in this room uh, seems to start at the information that you know who the murderer is or that they were murdered. Uh, they just kind of take it as, you know, we expected the murder. Oh, interesting. You know who the murderer is. Nobody looks suddenly afraid, shocked or anything. Just very, uh, the woman who is now the head of the guild here for the fishermen. Um, actually, she introduces herself as she's not known to, uh, the highness either is, uh, her name is Delai. Uh, introduces herself as the new head of the fishmongers guild uh Bert, real quick can i ask I, I would like to have been paying really close attention to the abbot's face when we said we knew who the murderer was sure and you made the crit right yeah completely impassive like oh that's interesting but not okay did not start at all okay okay uh so Delight introduces herself and sits down, crosses her arms, and says, I fail to see what input I can bring to this war council of yours, your highness. Um, she looks a little affronted at how that was delivered, but doesn't Yeah, say so she sound kind of shitty delivering <laughs> yes. that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I was advised that if not yourself, your guild may have some information. You do transport people to and from, do you not? Is that not one of the things that you'd grub for money? Um, and she just gives her this crap-eating grin back. <laughs> Looks like there might be some history there. Okay. I mean, that's not the worst line of questioning that she has for her either. Like, mm -hmm. it makes sense. Um so grown wolf you're the one who brought up knowing who the murderer is so she mm -hmm. uh takes another drink of wine and says so who is the murderer then why would they do this and how well, how how did they get through the security of this castle and leave not a mark on the bodies yet leave them dead i, I that was assume, the easy part yeah the the how is is like the who is maybe what you're you might be more interested in i think um you know garotten right uh well Someone, you know, really close to the council there, Telish, he's kind of the secret head of an assassin's guild. And we, we think that he is still disguised in this city after potentially killing, like, everyone you loved. Yes. But are not assassins hired murderers? So you know the name of the, the hand that killed them, but not the person that directed the hand. You have no use. <laughs> just very, just very affronted. Like you're of no use. Cool. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> kind of where I'm at too, bro. <laughs> hmm. uh, Peltar uh, looks at the rest of you and says, uh, "I would remind your highness that the situation is strained between your kingdom and Garotten. If one of the council." Um, did this by his own hand perhaps it was the council of garotten that ordered it 
Well, two of the console were involved with the Assassin's Guild, so uh, it would not surprise me that the third was as well, but we didn't find any evidence pointing to that. Sure. Though she didn't seem too phased that her compatriots were involved with an Assassin's Guild. So... So we have enemies in Garotten. Is, is that what I'm hearing? That they would kill my family? Why, why would they do this? What, what, is, what is the aim? You! Uh, and she kind of points to, again, the um, Delai. I want all the information you can give me on... Those that do not live here in Restonford that have used your services in the last week. I expect it given to my advisors before sun goes down today. You are dismissed. You, uh, she points at uh, the abbot, who again gives us deep bow. You say that your clergy cannot raise my family, nor can you speak with their spirits. Why is that? Why have you failed at this simple duty? Go exhort your adepts to do better. I want an answer before sundown. I kind of lean over to Peltar, and I just kind of say under my breath, like, what if they're not really dead? And you, wizard, You've seen fit to be absent during the times that these murders have taken place. Why should I not have you clapped in irons and thrown in our dungeons? Certainly someone with your ability could keep the clergy here from raising or speaking to the spirits of the departed. Tell me why I should not have you arrested. Uh, Peltar, who has been, as far as you've known him, pretty even of temper, uh, stands up and just says, try it. Peltor, you... What? Um, do we know, do we even know the details of the murders? Like, you know the details? Of the murder, well, of the mother's murder, not the not father, the, but no, the mother's. You don't, you don't know the exact details other than... I'd like to ask, I'd like to ask if we could find, if, if she, if she wants this solved, we need to know details. So you're going to distract her from the stare down she's having with Peltar. Yes, I'm going to like, they're like staring each other down. I'm going to like peek in between them and be like, hi, hi. Um, Yeah, so I'm here to solve a mystery. Um, And so if possible, I'd like some information. Unless you don't want us to solve your, 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 the murder or potential murder so, of your parents. So you're doing it's it you, just, though. just in this kind of talk, this tone that you're giving me right now. This, that's Milady. Your character. Okay. Um, make me a charisma you check. Should let him fight. Yeah. Charisma check. Yeah. Just give me a charisma check to see if she will deck this child. She's about to get. If that were just like watching it and smiling, he's like he's enjoying it. He tells Odette, "Is like you should let him fight first. All right. Uh, that's a success. It, it's enough of a, a rant that she's redirected. And she looks back at Peltar and says, it seems that your gnats have a better mind than you do. Uh, it's a louse. His name is Snickers. Um, <laughs> and he only has a little bit of time left in this world. So let's not throw, let's not sling mud at each other. So anyway, um, I'd like to know the details of the murder of your mother. How was she found? What, what was her room like? You say there was no forced entry, no struggle. Tell me about that, about her nightly routine, perhaps, as well. So she has, at this point, it just is ignoring you and is looking at Peltar again and says, very well, your gnat has impressed me. You have until sundown. Find out who the murderer was, who ordered the murder. Afterwards, if you're seen in this town again, we'll have you in our dungeons. Oh, my God. Uh, so she stands a bit drunkenly. Um, and goes to like part some curtains behind her. There's a door there. The guards quickly take up the space of where the door was as she's just departed. Everyone in the, around the table, around the room, just looks a little stunned. Uh, Delay just simply spits on the ground and walks out. But wait, my phone number. Um, <laughs> Did so you is, call me? 
Is there anybody there that I could ask about the details of the murder? <laughs> like, uh, there are still some guards there. Um, okay. So Qualton and his one of his servants is there. Um, I don't want to talk to Skeezball. Um, if if possible, could I talk to one of the? I'll talk to one of the guards, um, and I'd like to ask about how how the how the mother was found. Uh, the situation was very similar to the Baron. Uh, Again, you kind of gave like a title when you introduce yourself. So he'll say, uh, Malady. <laughs> she was found without a mark on her body in her bed chambers. Uh, there are no windows. The door was closed. The guard posted outside. There was no sign of struggle. Uh, it seems like her highness has allowed you, uh, allowed Peltar, and by extension you, to uh, observe the crime scenes. Um Ooh. If that is what you wish, we can take you there. There was no mark on the body, you say? There was no mark on the body. Who took food to her? Um, poison sounds likely. Po poison is possible, yes. Uh, the scullery, uh, the kitchen staff was here. The last meal she took was uh, with her daughter. Uh, they ate of the same food. She seems to be unaffected. Um, again, the, like the Baron was found with ligature marks, but other than that, like no signs of struggle is what he's trying to. But in this case of the Baroness, there's no sign of anything. Just simply, you know, dead. Maybe the daughter had her parents killed. Um, do you was know? I going to suggest poison in the wine that the Princess was drinking. The Baroness, sorry, was drinking. But honestly, not fast that she is killed after that <laughs> <laughs> um you know npc said something that very this struck a chord uh the idea of why you wouldn't be able to speak with dead if they weren't actually dead to what to what npc had said um how would i would i potentially be able to see the body of the mother the baron has the body of the mother yes uh she has not been interred in the crypt yet the baron has been uh oh my god Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. This could did be I, really bad. <laughs> did, I, did I miss a reason why we might think that they're alive? I didn't catch so, that. I mean, I so brought it up. But... I have a yeah. No, I said I. Don't worry. I gave you. I gave yeah. you mad cred for it. So <laughs> you said that, and it sparked. I have a spell that I've been waiting to cast called Feign Death, which makes it seem as though someone is dead, and it's a fairly low level spell. So it's yeah. one that many people can cast. I'm so. super glad that you said it because I can't meta that knowledge, but I, I kind of <laughs> was like, you're like, oh, we can't communicate with them and we can't bring them back. It's so smart, what's man. stopping it's us smart. from thinking that they're not dead? Like Talish used poisons. Did he have like a specific poison that just knocked them out? Like, and we're just framing just it spell. as a murder? Like, just like a what end? Did... Yeah, let's see the body then. To bury yeah. them, and then they actually die. Yeah. Like, if there's no way to... Anyway, I don't know. It's to pin the crime on someone else. That seems know? like a long way to go for the same ends. So Peltar, you're all discussing, and he, he just kind of breaks in and says, to keep myself from being further accused, I will do what you need to do. I will await in the courtyard so that I'm fully visible and I cannot be accused of tampering with anything you find. Uh, he looks just uh, exasperated completely. He's like... <laughs> uh, before you go, Peltar, do you know a way to undo feign death? Like whatever that spell that she said? You're a wizard. Well, uh, there are many magics that could keep a body alive yet seem dead. Um, Can you cancel such magic? Oak, why don't you roll me, tell me high or low, and roll a percentage die for me. That would be low always. Uh, he rifles around his coat and he comes out with two items. Uh, he hands you a rod. <gasps> and a few, you know, it's, it's just under a foot long. It's not unadorned. seems to be made of brass probably. He said, uh, you, will you will feel a tingling in your hand if you wave this above something that has been ensorcelled. The, how strong that movement is will give you an idea of how strong the magic involved is. Use it sparingly. I know not how many charges uh, or uses left it has. And he hands uh, 
Dion, he'll hand NPC a bag of powder. And he says, well, this will yeah, I was not... about to say, yes, this is cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> yes. This will make anything kick. <laughs> We're going to get high. <laughs> uh, sprinkle this uh, upon a corpse. If uh, it is not truly dead, there will appear to be some discoloration on the spot that you sprinkle it. It won't last long. You'll have to look very carefully when you do it. Uh, if the being is truly dead, there will be no reaction. This should work no matter the magic as it causes a, uh, a reaction with the being's skin oils. If, if it's still alive, it will react. If not, it will not. Dan, and... meet the ride. <laughs> yep. I just kind of take it, kind of feel how strong it is, bite it, and I toss it to uh, our wizard. <laughs> oh, uh, how many uses did you say this had? As I'm like about to wave <laughs> yeah. it. For my no. head. Uh, oh, um, oh, okay, all so right, fine. To answer to answer your question as well, uh, having known the spell, feign death, it can be dispelled, like it is subject to being dispelled. It only lasts um, uh, for a time or set condition, but uh, there is an easy way to tell if such a a marginal spell has been used. Simply cut the body. If the blood flows. Um, then it's, it, it is possible that it's not dead. If the blood does not flow readily, it's pooled in parts of its body, the body is truly dead. Fine death doesn't find it that well, then. Okay. Well, the, Interesting. Yeah. the person can also still hear, yeah. smell and think. Yep. So it's only, it's only, uh, and feel touch only and better. sight, touch and sight are gone. But, but yeah, they're so they're still there. The lights are still on. But this it's looks like, like no one's home. Creepy. Yes. Not so much faint death as put in coma. That's yeah, yeah, scary. because it, yeah. essentially the spell is done so that uh, it looks like you've died, but it's like because there's no respiration going on, but life can still actually be detected. Like you, you can still your body doesn't get cold <laughs> over time. Mm. <laughs> mm. Well, presumably, they would know that if mm. that was the case with yeah. these two. Still, I mean, but at least no we'll be able we to see. Yep. We'll be able to yeah. see if the ma if there's magic cast on the on the corpses, which could be preventing them from speaking too. So mm -hmm. yep. we've got a lead. We're gonna check out some corpses today, folks. I got a rod. <laughs> mm. So the guard tells you if you wish to see uh, the Baroness's body, uh, it, it's just not yet been prepared for the mausoleums, but we've removed her from the room. Would you rather see the room or the body? Uh, let's go to the mausoleum. Okay. Let's go to the body first, is what he said. Let me translate. He said body first. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. The body is not in the mausoleum. the The Duke's body oh. is. The Baron's body oh. is, but not the Baroness's. Well, on our way over, I'd like to ask what what is entailed in preparing a body for the mausoleum? Uh, a cleaning of the body, um, the removal of blood uh, organs. Uh, so, uh, it's it's a ritualized. I, I'm sorry, my lady. I, I'm not. A, I'm not a mortician. I don't know the exact procedures, but it's to preserve uh, the flesh and the countenance so that the bodies can be viewed later, so that they don't rot. So they gut and dress them. So if he wasn't dead before, he is now. Yeah, well, okay. yeah somebody did murder him. It just wasn't who we thought. Um, it was well, the mortician <laughs> accidental death. You may want to talk <laughs> to whoever performed that right to see if it was actually follow through with i could see that scene now this poor mortician starting the cutting and the, the, the baron just sits upright and falls back down he's like just gonna keep going just gonna keep going yeah. <laughs> okay honestly, well honestly yeah too so so the uh fishmonger that was here wanted uh, any idea what the beef is between them they didn't seem too friendly um, not that she was friendly with anyone but uh, the guard is actually, um, no, he's, he's an older guy, a little in uh, good shape, though. He says, well, they were childhood friends. Uh, Delia is a, a bit older, but uh, they played together as children. Delia's father's, um, well, her family is quite wealthy, actually, but she chose not to inherit uh, and to make her own way. Um, therefore, as they grew older, uh, Delai became more independent, refused to show up at certain parties and formal gatherings, and uh, 
Her Highness took that to be, um, well, a snub at herself, uh, though I don't believe that was how it was intended. Just a casual case of lives drifting apart. Okay. Delilah was her only childhood companion. I believe she took it quite hard when Delilah refused to uh, come to the parties and the events that were, mm -hmm. as a member of society, she was uh, duty bound to come to and refused. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was quite apparent that there was some animosity. She's fourteen. Uh, well. It's not as if she's out of her childhood now. <clears throat> really. So, is the War Council still around? That's us. Yeah. <laughs> well, the the um, Qualton's still here. Uh, the, he's conferring with uh, the the person he brought with him about, like, well, you know, what haven't we tried to speak with the dead or to summon a spirit or to find, you know, to make some contact with the deceased? And they're just going over what the priest have tried so far. I'm going to, I'm going to go over to them. I think I'm guys out of character table talk. I think I want to ask them if they tested to see feign death as a method. What do you think? Yes. No. All right. I'm going to go over and I'm going to be like, excuse me. Um, I okay. know you guys are really busy and are trying to come up with something, but I had I had a thought that might help. Uh, um, so Qualton just kind of turns his head and is like as if you never spoke. Uh, but the brother that's with him kind of inserts himself in between you and Qualton and puts out a hand and says, I'd be happy to answer any of your questions for the clergy. Um, hello. Hi. Uh, my name's NPC, and I was That's an interesting name. If... Uh, I am Daniel. Ah, nice to meet you, Daniel. That is also very He's just shaking your name. hand. He hasn't let it I'm go yet. Shaking it back just <laughs> as firmly. Like, I got a 16 strength. There is a gr gorilla grip going on here. And sh she just kind of, like, looks him in the eyes while doing this and is like, have you tested to see if they were under the effect of a... a What's it called, Odette? Feign, feign death? Feign death. Feign death. Oh, I, yes, I'm the, not good The magic. Brotherhood uh, checked the bodies for any signs of magical interference, uh, and, and there was none, which, which makes Who the ability to... the Brotherhood to, did it? Uh, well, I'm not sure of the exact name, but uh, many brothers have tried. Uh, Are you able to do it? I, and I'm afraid no. No, I, I'm not able to. Uh, Qualton himself, uh, our, our, our abbot, tried it. Uh, all of the senior brothers uh, had tried it. Uh, of mm. course, they were checked to see if they were inspelled, but, but nothing nothing showed up. Um, mm. You have quite a strong grip. May I have my hand back? Oh, of course. Sure. And I've released my grip finally. He's, he's got a big grin on his face while he's, he's talking to you. It's like, I'm afraid uh, Qualton... Uh, it doesn't directly uh, answer questions except for from royalty or the highborn. He has to stay uh, pure. Um, he doesn't like to sully himself, but I can answer any questions that you have. Is that a thing in religion? I say that out loud. <laughs> you you see the eyes shift back and forth like, uh, yes, yes, I'm told that it's a common thing. I've never heard of that before. That seems way too bougie for someone of my taste. Are, are we uh, in earshot of this? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so, yes, I'm like, completely. she's a princess and I'm a king. And I point to my crown mm -hmm. so we can speak to him. Uh, hmm. Uh, Qualton uh, reminded that at least one of you uh, put forth a title. Uh, does yeah. give a bow. To Odette and says, "My apologies, uh, lady. I it has slipped my mind that you are uh, nobility in your kingdom. Uh, I don't know from whence that kingdom comes, but we will certainly grant you uh, the nobility in your title. Uh, you, sir, uh, I am sorry you did not state 
your qualifications but he, he's, he's looking at to. the he's looking at the crown which is kind of odd that you would wear it uh just out and about it says but that is uh an intriguing headpiece you have and again he bows to you slight slightly less low than he did to <laughs> odette <laughs> Uh, but he approaches the two of you while as his his brother his his adept is talking to uh, NPC. Mm. Uh, I pull the guy aside since uh, Colton's like with them now. I pull him further away from Colton or whatever to talk to him alone. Mm-hmm. But you guys can do your convo first. I've been talking enough. <laughs> So you are Peltar's agents then. So is it is it just the two that propose to have titles talking to Colton now, or is it all of us? He's the only. You, those are the only two that he's acknowledging exist okay, in this okay. room. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Okay, so it's those two. All right. And you rooted I, I out. Look at you rooted out this Telish from Giratin. Very good work. You're to be applauded. We at least know the hand that wielded uh, we'll say the knife though there were no wounds on the bodies at least of that sort oh your analogy is wrong we found the knife not the hand he doesn't even respond to you yeah talking. i, I realize <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry no no, no when he does, i'm gonna say i'm gonna just... repeat i'm gonna parrot i'm gonna like yeah we found the hand not or we found the knife not the hand oh very very good very commendable uh <laughs> not such your character i'm gonna lean into tristan and just be like i thought it was a really good point <laughs> uh, is is there uh, anything else you would have no we we done we we had all of course we checked the bodies for magics that would make them appear to be um dead uh the bodies well the baron was most certainly strangled uh by some cord some some bit of something uh his uh at least the burns around his neck showed that although interestingly enough as he was uh prepared for burial in the mausoleum um they did check the throat for wounds and there was no damage to uh the small bones and muscles within the throat it seemed like the the burn on the neck was simply skin level mm. So maybe we see the body a pull a draw well uh, the the baron's body has been interned in the mausoleum i'm sure they will allow you access but there's nothing to see at this point his body was prepared organs removed his skin <laughs> applied with oils so that they would last well good then his body should be in his resting place oh, of course yes he's still in state they haven't uh, entombed the body yet uh, so should be a simple matter to request a viewing. Cool. Yes. <laughs> you say that, I'm like, yes, princess. So good idea then, princess and king. Yeah. Let's see the body. Yeah, it's a great idea. Let's go see the body. Uh, yeah, so Colton just kind of snaps, and one of the guards comes and he says, attend to what the lady and the master wish uh, done. And the guard just nods and then turns to you what what, what do you want done mm. what was it was it am i supposed to do we want to see the baron's body oh oh yeah yeah it's it, it's in the mausoleum uh he's all laid out all purdy like they did a good job on the the, the, the paints <laughs> oh, that's, that's good yeah good yeah he looks, he looks so fresh you could eat him i mean not that i eat human flesh i'm just saying it looks fresh i mean i've eaten human flesh it's good what's it like it's like really big Chicken. pig. So yeah, I call he's it big pig. He he starts taking you guys off. If uh, whoever wants to see the mausoleum, this guard is you know. I'm gonna, go see them. I'm gonna yeah. see everyone heading out, and I'm gonna be like, oh okay, nice talking to you, and leave. <laughs> <laughs> come and come and visit the abbot anytime. <laughs> yep, sure. Good luck storming the mausoleum. <laughs> All right, so if you guys go to the mausoleum, uh, they'll take you down. So currently it's not sealed off. There are some guards on the outside. Um, they said the body is placed for viewing, apparently. Part of the tradition is the body's left out for a week for uh, people to say final goodbyes, etc. So he is laid out uh, above his stone crypt that's been set up. Um, 
he is in all of his finery. He's got a double-handed sword that's clutched in his hands go down the length of his body. Um, and he looks like he looks alive. They weren't kidding when they said they applied paints to the skin to make it look like he was living. It looks like the guy's having a good nap. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you later about that flesh-eating thing. I, I hear they don't take flavors well, though, but uh, if you've got any recipes, I, you know, hey. Oh, I'm, like, <laughs> nothing but recipes, my friend. And so I essentially, like, give him my Twitter, <laughs> yeah. which is just, which is just like a carrier pigeon with... <laughs> It can only hold about 140 or 280 characters, but, you know. <laughs> Cannibal interest? Question mark. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, you're you're left there. There are guards. Uh, so it's just a few steps down. And uh, what you have is to the right and left are niches carved into the wall where stone caskets have been placed. You can see the lineage of this family going back several generations. His casket is laid out in the floor with oil lamps burning around it. He's on top of the lid. He hasn't been put inside yet. Um, there are no guards inside, and there's no further exits. It's just a long hallway that stretches further back um, with no, you know, at the end of it is just a solid stone wall. Can we see what previous generations of people looked like? Uh, do they have those sort of pictures up there? No, there's not. There's not like death masks or anything like that. Uh, okay. So there's nobody in here but us. You're the only people in here. Yep. All right. So let's check that body. Um, is it cold to the touch? Is it cold to the touch? Uh, you touch the skin. Yes. Yeah. It is, and your hand okay. comes back with uh, some, you know, some paint, some pigments on it. Oh, okay. There's like a mark uh, now of your fingers on his face. <laughs> okay. Uh, Whoopsie. You know, we, the the said over. they checked for magic, but do we want to wave the rod or do we want to like just keep it for future use? I mean, Break his he, finger, see if he bleeds. I mean, yeah, they did say they drained the body. He's already blood. gone. Yeah. But if if maybe they, they actually didn't. did it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm curious. I could use some oh, of the powder fair. on him, but like he's cold to the touch, so he's dead. I'm pretty sure he feels dead. So like I could use a little bit of the powder. I'm sure it won't use all of it, and see like if there's a reaction. But he has pain on his skin. Uh, does he have like a sleeve that I can yeah. roll up a little? Yeah. And if is you do, painted? no, the, the paint ends at like right at his wrist. So if you pull it okay, up, the, pe the, the, the flesh is all very white and pale. All right. I'm going to sprinkle a teeny bit of powder on okay. that mm -hmm. exposed area. Sure. Um, there's no reaction, it. although your okay. fingers turn bright red and they sting a little. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> wipe it off my <laughs> pants all right so i roll the sleeve up put the arm back down gently and make it look undisturbed i'm like all right he's definitely dead so yeah they definitely probably did what they say they did to this one we should check the bareness maybe i mean is there any other idea you want to check the body for yeah i just want to have a look at the neck quickly just just to see what those burns they were talking about were yeah, um, so you expose the neck, and it looks like they've painted the neck down to the collar line. Um, but if you look really closely, you can see that there are some kind of, like, uh, not necessarily indentation, but, like, you know what a carpet burn looks like? Like right. so that's so, what so they're using burn in the colloquial rather yeah. than an actual burn. It's mm -hmm. just marks on the neck. Yeah. Right. Is it, a, burn. is it a hickey? No, it, it actually <laughs> goes all the way around the neck, and it's... Okay. Uh, it's, okay. It's there's more of it towards the front of the neck and less towards the back. So wait, you said towards hair, the right? front yeah. and not like so towards the front. Um, it's it's the mark is a little wider and then mm -hmm. it gets thinner towards the back. Okay. Yeah. And you're gonna have to so remove like... some of the the so dyes no to way, see that. There's no way he was strangled because if it was thinner toward the back, like it, you have to like cinch. To like actually yeah. strangle somebody, you can't just like. I get. I know this part of it but with like yeah, a. But yeah. If there's no broken a, bones, then the the broken bones are the thing like the of them being strangled is very low. You you can strangle just from the front. Um, really? Yeah. Okay. You just have to close off the windpipe. But yeah, the, the front okay. is what closes off the windpipe. The sides cuts off the blood flow. 
So CSI maybe he was trying Greenhawk. to pull Michael yeah! Hutchins or something. I know significantly less about strangling somebody than I thought I did. <laughs> I'm just very kinky. I know too much. Maybe it was autoerotic <laughs> asphyxiation. <laughs> oh, the the family name doesn't happen to be Carradine Ooh. on this. Brand. No, it's Hutchins. Ooh, too soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. So, I mean, if you actually start disrobing uh, the Baron a little bit just to see, like you do, oh, you will actually it. see the it. suture marks where they did pull out organs, etc. So, like, yeah. if, he, if he wasn't dead before this happened, he's <laughs> certainly dead now. Mm -hmm. Let's go check out the mother spell. before they do this to her. Yeah. What was that, Richard? Lose. Yeah. What I was just saying, is resurrection a spell? Yeah, it is. They tried that, right, too. So that, yeah. That could be they used then, yeah. Mm. I wonder if they've checked to see whether it's like the whole place, the whole island or whatever that cannot be used, communicate with dead and resurrection, or whether it's these specific quarters. They do have completely different gods here than when we're from, so I mean, I wonder if that would have something to do with it. I, like, I, I don't know. To, to be honest, unless you were all born in like basically the same village or nearby, you're all going to be used to having different gods. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I mean, it could be something on the premises. You know, they checked the bodies. The bodies weren't magical. Hmm. This is a good question. I think that the only answer is to go check out the mom, see what's up. All right. Is that where you're going next? I'd like to go there, probably. Okay. Uh, so they have her laid out in uh, well, basically the, the physician's or embalmer's room. Uh, they have not started doing anything yet. Um, it just, you know, she was just found in the morning. Uh, yeah. But they were gonna, they're going to need to start work soon. All right. <clears throat> so there's people in here, right? There are, and there are guards on the outside. Uh, the guards have been told that you are allowed access, so they do let you in. Right. Okay. Uh, may we examine the body? Uh, a guard is stationed in the room, uh, and he says, yes, just don't desecrate the body, please. Uh, I plan, no, <laughs> well, we, just a simple, two simple tests. One is just a powder that's easily wiped off. The other is I'm not even going to touch her. Um. I'm going to try the powder first. I'm going to just sprinkle a little on like a hand or something. You using the same forefinger and thumb you did before? I'm going to try and just like <laughs> shake it out of the bag a little. All right. You get some of the powder on her. Um, you watch very intently for a few moments and there's no reaction. Uh, okay. So this means that she's definitely dead? Question mark? Right? Is that what they told me with this powder? Yeah. If it doesn't work, they're dead. So There's no magical stuff on them. Right. No, or the powder. The, the powder is just live dead. The rod ah, is, is magical right. stuff. Yeah. Right. So okay. So go ahead and uh, whip your rod out. <laughs> Over the corpse of the Baroness. Again. Just whip it right out there. You know, <laughs> whip it I've, out. I've lived a long time, and this is the this is everything I've ever wanted. Everyone, I just I want to thank you for being here, and I actually like slowly like just raise the rod from the center of me and just <laughs> point it over, and I'm like, oh yeah, oh this is this is it right here. Uh, so the you actually you you didn't know what to expect, but the rod seems to vibrate just very minutely in your hand. Hmm. So we've got some wiggle. We've got some jiggle. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. she's There's... in sore salt. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling it. Oh, Det, check this out. And I like put the rod like near you. To... Nope, not going to touch that. Not after oh. what you just did with it. <laughs> oh, it, it's really nope. neat. Okay. And then I, so, just, I put the rod back. Yep. <laughs> is there like a, there's just a guard here? Is there like a medical professional dude here too nope uh just the guards just the guards uh, i look to the guard and i be and i uh just tell them like so our test has uh pr shown that she is possibly ensorcelled uh we might need a mage to dispel something on her this might 
give us some clues and maybe a way to communicate with her from beyond the grave. Uh, the only Magus in the town is Peltar. Uh, I mean, could you could you escort him here? He wished to be separate from us so as he's just visible, but if you, he's with a guard, that shouldn't be a problem. He's wishing to stay separate from us, but if we need a mage to further check this, yep, you know, he you know, pounds his chest and says, of course. Uh, Do it back. And I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> ow. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so the guard goes away. So while the guard, so this was the guard that's in the room. So you're now left alone with the body. There are guards right outside the door, though. But you're now left alone with the body. Is there anything you want to do? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prick the finger with, with one of my sharp objects. Just a little. Yep. Um. Let me think about this for a minute. So how many hours would have passed? Okay. Uh, yeah, no blood flow. Okay. So magic, but probably still dead, is what I just say to the group. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, is there, do we want to check her neck as well? for the I, I just go to check like her neck yep. for the same marks it looks, if possible it looks fine um she's in rigor now uh, so like mm -hmm. you're not able to move her head unless you really really want to break it and try but um there doesn't appear to be any marks on what's exposed so she's exposed basically from the breastbone up uh her legs there's a cloth leave it leg over the middle of her essentially um i'm you know what i'm gonna lift up the cloth and look under it because i'm woman here i'd like to check her body for any other signs of trauma or anything like that uh, yeah i mean you can do that you just take the robe off and just look uh to see again she's in rigor uh so she's it's difficult to move her around but you can see where yeah. the blood is starting to pool in the abdomen um yeah. uh yeah there's there's no sign i mean other than the bloating that you're going to get because there's no blood flow there's no signs bert, of anything bert i have a i have a meta question mm -hmm. um if I were to, if I were to try and like examine, like obviously a like, not detect mag magic in AD and D because detect magic doesn't actually give you what type of magic it is that you're dealing with. Yep. If I were to collect some of her blood, could I potentially take it to be analyzed and maybe maybe see what type of of magic she's under, or would magic not be stored in the blood? Um, you don't know. Like your character okay. would know if you're asking Meta. No, that doesn't work. Okay. Yeah, CSI yeah. rotten. Yeah. My character would still probably try and take some of her blood just to like hang on to it, like because I don't know. Okay. But well, I, yeah. To do that, you're going to have to pierce her abdomen and collect the the pooled blood. Just because, a tiny yeah. one. I don't want a big thing. I don't want like a bucket of blood, Bert. Oh, I just want a wait. little bit. We can get a bucket of blood. No. Oh, <laughs> well, you're going to have to pierce let's, her with something, let's... and basically all you've got is a dagger. So. I thought that. I I, wait. I thought that we already pricked her finger to see if she was to yeah, see. Yeah, I, I would was... assume someone used a knife. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, she's not bleeding. She's not bleeding. Yeah. I forgot. Right. I mean, Let's... we are in a doctor's place essentially, so they are going to have pricking tools here. If you, yeah. Wanna, if you want to look around, I don't want to deface these, her. Like, I don't want needles no. that are like yeah. knitting needles. And they're going to get real mad at me if I do this. It's okay. I'm not going to do that. I, I was at once very excited when you started to talk about it, and then bummed when when you realized oh. what it entails. Like, oh, oh. I'm not. I'm not opening up the the blood balloon yeah. in her tum dum. I, I wouldn't oh. do that either. No, thank no, you. No, no. I, I, I happen to like my head attached to my body. Okay, that was my idea. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> um, uh, well, I just want to check out her tongue. Mm -hmm. see if yeah. There's, uh, yeah, true love's kiss. Or... That might work. Yeah. No, um, no, not what I was thinking. And... <laughs> you're, you're a thief. You have some study with poisons, although not as much as an assassin does. You're not telling him you're an assassin, right? That, that's still player knowledge. Right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> make me an intelligence check. Intelligence check. Got lots of rerolls too. Uh, uh, go. He succeeded, but not Pass. very it's well. Like at all. you look at the inside of her, her mouth and tongue. No particular poison that you're familiar with. And again, you're not an assassin, so you're not familiar with a lot of poisons. But you're not seeing any. Like the the tongue isn't swollen any more than what happens when the blood pulls away. The inside of the mouth doesn't look like it's irritated. Like there's nothing that's raw uh, on the inside of the cheeks or the tongue. It looks normal. Okay. While 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 Tristan's figuring that out, I'd like to, with the limited knowledge that I have as a lowly level two uh, wizard, 
just uh, essentially see if I can figure out anything about this magic while we're waiting for Peltar. All right. So doing magical research uh, generally takes time. If you want to get just a quick, you know, maybe an intelligence check and I'll... Okay. Sounds good doing that now. Uh, I have a 16 and I rolled a 14. High success. Okay. So the rod is telling you what little magic... Uh, that was part of whatever happened was like infinitesimal. It was there quickly and gone. Uh, so it was, it was no long right. It was nothing that caused uh, a, a great deal of power. Mm -hmm. uh, so that will tell you either it wasn't something that was done on the spot, like someone casting a spell, but it could have been from uh, an item, an item, a power, mm -hmm. an artifact did something. Okay. Um, you're a second level mage. Yeah. So you understand that uh, there are spells uh, that you haven't yet learned that can do mm -hmm. things like trap souls, destroy souls, uh, mm -hmm. remove a soul, put it somewhere else. So if something happened to the bo to the soul that was in this body, you would not be able to resurrect or speak to that soul. Oh, and so um, let's say y'all bring up the feign death not working and then me getting this sense from the rod. I'll bring that up to everybody and be like, you know, they could maybe not talk to them because they aren't home. That soul could be like somewhere fucking else. Their soul? Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I like my mind just... <laughs> and PC's like, At I've been doing moment, all like, these horrible what? things under the belief there's no such thing as a soul. <laughs> <Is> a soul. <laughs> oh, shit. I need to pick a deity for my character sheet now. No, I have a deity for this one. It's just, <laughs> machines don't have souls, usually. Oh. So, she, oh. Primus, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, I'm well, gonna leave no trace with the body and like <laughs> clean everything up and like put everything back the way it looks and all right. you know. So uh, they he does come back with Peltar. Also following behind Peltar is uh, essentially the physician, and uh, he's he's like uh, I'm I'm due to prepare the the body. Uh, I understand from Peltar here though that you need a, a, some more time. Uh, I'll wait outside. Just let me know when I can do my duties. Uh, okay, so uh, tell Peltar what you surmise, Grown. So, yeah, Peltar, um, you know, you know more than me, but if the clerics aren't working out here, the rod did kind of wiggle waggle just a tiny bit, indicating maybe, like, contact trace magic stuff, like a magic item or something, but maybe the souls just got, you know, yanked out, put in a jar, put somewhere else. Maybe the souls aren't home. He nods. He says, such magics are possible. Uh, if that rod did not give you a great motion, it probably was from some sort of enchanted item. I was not permitted to see the body mm. before they interred the Baron. Well, I know you wanted to recuse so as not to get accused, but now... Um, <laughs> this simply yeah. points stronger at myself, I'm afraid. Such yeah. magics used to uh, remove or trap souls are generally under our purview. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. You're like the only game in town, so, I mean, but now that you do have a chance, it might be the only way to clear your name is to examine uh, the Baroness with us. Uh, he thinks about it, and uh, he says, well... Such magics will take some time. I'll need to press Her Highness for that time. Um, right. I will send for my apprentices and potential uh, and, and uh, ask the, Her Highness if uh, she is willing to let me perform such tests. Uh, he, he looks over at you and, and gives a nod and says, You are... A fine member of our community if you wish some instruction maybe see me after this is all over yeah yeah actually that sounds fantastic i was gonna bring that up but didn't want to push in you know so thanks for offering you're a potential that bathing makes his magic stronger <laughs> <laughs> i heard that right, so uh he leaves you hear him have a conversation with the physician no uh, wait come back i have a question <laughs> quickly yep, yep. 
it is just uh, okay if the soul has been moved somewhere else can the soul be moved back into the body and will it reanimate and go again or well uh to this body uh perhaps but generally once the body has been dead for so long you would release the soul to whatever reward it achieved and then call it back. Um, it can't be directly placed into a dead body. It can be placed into something else that's been prepared for it or a living body. What would be so, the purpose of someone doing this on just a... No. Not well, like I mean, super noble type person. I mean, they were... So uh, real quickly, Pelta, let me just have like a little huddle with my peeps, okay? And I'm going to grab everyone and be like, Hey, you know, little girl, like, rubbing her fineries on her mouth, drinking real heavy. Maybe, like, one of her parents were like, I'd like to second do over at life again. Um, so there were two people who were asking questions there. So, Oak, what were you asking? Oh, I'm sorry, Oak, if I were talking. No, no, no problem. It, like, just, it, that was kind of mailing like, well, while these are nobles, they're not, like, empire-expanding nobles. What would be the purpose of capturing their souls? What, what value would they have? Okay. And Richard? I was half answering that question. I was just going to say, just so that they can't answer the questions when they're trying to be called. And this is a short term. Once yeah, but that's still someone, a lot of you're not going to try and do... Yeah, but it's an undetectable way of killing somebody in this place. It has to be expensive as well. You get the you get what you pay for, or so I have heard with assassinations. Understand? <laughs> He's like, not that you would have a chart yep. telling you exactly how much an assassination would cost. <laughs> exactly. That's wonderful. I love that. All right. I mean, so... once you've killed someone and once you've taken somebody's soul out, and then the priests go, "Oh, we can't bring their soul back." I mean, then releasing that soul afterwards say a week two weeks later uh, nobody else is going to try and contact the soul again after they've been buried because they already know it doesn't work so you wouldn't waste magics trying to do it again later or would you well i wouldn't but how long has the baron been dead uh, a few days you guys didn't even get to the week mark yet so yeah I mean, you you hold them as long as you can until somebody says, "Ah, murder's over. We don't care." What's the statute of limitations on murder in this? Uh... You know, for someone that's not an assassin, Tristan knows an awful lot about assassinating. Hmm. But I'm thinking, <laughs> and I'm cool with it. <laughs> nice. You get the friends rate when you need somebody off. All right. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so you hear Peltar go outside. He talks to the mortician. You can hear the conversation. He's basically saying, don't touch the body. There's uh, magics going on with it. I need to talk to her highness. And uh, so, like, he agrees. Okay, we won't do anything until her highness gives the clearing. Okay. Okay. What's next? Does Peltar come back in? Well, not immediately. He's got to go convince the hi her highness to allow him to do a very long <laughs> um, I want I thought we should maybe tell him that thought that Frendon had well I'm going to say that um, Tristan stopped him concerned. before leaving the yeah. room so yeah that, that happened in his presence and then he finishes okay. leaving okay, okay cool yeah. cool cool yeah sorry for over talking to you both there I just got excited sorry. oh no that's no problem that yeah. happens on the uh, voice well. chat <laughs> alright so yeah so, so you say the scene? ooh So where are we going next? I wish we knew like an assassin who like could really suss out what happened here. It's a shame. Turn and look at Tristan. Look, I only have an eight strength. I need a twelve strength to be an assassin. <laughs> I need the special. That sounds like a great cover. It's like, I, I'm I, too weak. You can just start going like down the bad streets in uh, Restonford, say, "Look, I really just need to talk to an assassin. Could I pay like a quarter of the price of an assassination just to pick your brain?" <laughs> so uh, you did bring up a good point, Grown. Uh, do we have any of the guards with us still? Uh, no, the guard that was sent for Peltar did not come back into the room. We need to speak with somebody who knew the girl through her childhood as well as her mother to find out personality traits. 
Uh, what I'm picking up is like maybe they transferred into the daughter's body. Mm-hmm. I mean, Guildmaster. <gasps> oh, you, you're all very smart. I'm surprised you're not magic users. Yeah. So what's next? Um, you know what? I I don't mind trying to catch up to her while you you go on. I mean, I'm kind of dressed like she is. We had that moment, you know, the gherkin us around, you know, like, I I, I don't mind. I'll go with you just because we're all kind of common. I'm kind of common. I'm following. If we're going to go talk to my future girlfriend, I'm following. You, you oh, basic shit. bitches, let's just go. Everyone, we're, we're doing this. <laughs> all right. Uh, so where exactly do you head to find her? Uh, fish, I'm thinking the mountains. Um, <laughs> or? Guess, uh, she's a salmon or? monger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I guess, yeah, let's try to head towards if there's anything obvious on the docks. Let's see on the map if we... Because we there was that bar by the docks. Is that kind of where like all the big docks were? Uh, well, all the docks are like right around. Like you have docks all over the place uh, oh. in the river here, but oh, you do have the up, side yeah. like where these twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six. Mm-hmm. Uh, they all look like warehouses right off of the larger docks where um, your merchants would unload and um, put in their merchandise to be sold later. So you're, you know, if you, that might be a good conclusion, if you have a guild, they're probably situated somewhere around all that wealth. Yeah, let's go need... there. Yeah. Look out for the loudest person. <laughs> <laughs> we need to go to 2300 Dying Minotauru Lane. Yeah. Uh, right, yeah, if you get if you get down here, um, business is going on as usual. Uh, so there are plenty of ships that are parked. They're having uh, all their cargo put into these different warehouses. You see several people there who are basically... You figure tallying for tax purposes or figuring what storage fees will be. Um, these people are all dressed similar to how Delia uh, was dressed. I have a question that's for our Disney princesses benefit. Um, is it, Are there any live markets of animals being checked in and out as goods of these ports? You know, potential friends or allies. <laughs> it's mostly fish, vegetables, and... Uh, goods like uh okay. wool raw wool okay no animals yeah i'm not gonna animal friendship a fish sorry <laughs> she's got yeah, standards do, man do allows, standards not a fish <laughs> yeah. it allows not a fish yeah that's fair that's fair <laughs> okay um fish allows. you know it, never mind i had two puns in a row and it would have been bad um so is there anyone that i can talk to that seems like they would know where the guild headquarters would I, i'm gonna walk up to like somebody that looks officious yeah again like all the the officials here all dress very similar uh okay to, to, to yeah. okay yeah so i'm gonna be like hey um so we had some business uh which may um which may like delay may want to hear it, it kind of concerns her and and we think it's important he just points uh, to this house over here, 22 okay. on the map, and says, okay. Guild Hall's that way. She's probably there now. She was summoned to the castle earlier today, though, so can't guarantee she's there. Okay. Thank you. All right, so I, I suppose we all go there? Sure. Yep, yeah, you find her easily enough. She is... Uh, in a heated conversation with several uh, boat captains uh, who are trying to get docking fees lowered um, you know, due to all kinds of uh, reasons, all kinds of reasons. And she's just screaming and yelling back at them. Um, <laughs> it's like, hey, it's my dock, my fees. You don't like it? You can go do business down in Garotten. Um, yeah, so you guys walk in, and uh, when you do, all the captains, uh, they all just kind of like go up to her and shake her hand and say, oh, yeah, yeah. It seems like as gruff as they were talking, they know each other fairly well. Um, and she's like, Yeah, see you tomorrow. We'll keep yelling then. Hey, oh, uh, you people. Remember us? Yeah. Hi. Peltars. AIDS. Yes. You coming here to to give me impossible tasks as well? 
uh, you see that she's got like stacks of ledgers on her on her desk. Uh, we so, actually, um, oh, go ahead. No, you. I was just going to do it because I'm oh, okay. just going to fill the silence. Um, go ahead. We uh, actually had a question, and I know it's going to be semi-personal in nature, and I apologize in advance, but I promise. You talk a lot. Is... Spit it out. The princess, or whatever, her highness. Her highness, yes. The royal brat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is she? Did she seem different? than the last than what you remember of her did she seem abnormal not because she's stressed or dealing with the grief like beyond that as someone who knows her as well as you do from what we've heard give me a charisma check oh god can old that do it yeah, no nope. you're asking <laughs> you the questions this. you got this <laughs> we have you got this npc i'm gonna re-roll <laughs> okay yeah low success all right uh she shrugs and says i haven't had the pleasure of her company in a few years but she seemed the same high strung as she always has been she's drinking more now Ooh, she acting like her mom more Mm. (laughs) they were always very similar hmm so are there any, like, let's say we're trying to suss out whether or not, like, maybe she's not who she says she is any longer. Not that we, like, have any suspicions of that or anything, but are there any questions we could ask her that only you know that she would know the answer to? Are, are you suspecting that it's someone in disguise? I can tell you that that can't be. That oh. is, it is her. There's no, different not with magic's involved. Yeah, what he said. You want what? Uh, a bit of trivia about her past? Something personal? That Something only, only you would know. know between the two of you that only yeah. the two of you would know. <laughs> yes, I do. And she gives uh, a smirk. <laughs> Ask her why the stable boy was really let go. Oh. Holy crap, this girl is 14 at the moment. <laughs> All right. And she's drinking and... and uh, the stable boy is also 14, though. Yeah. That's what makes it appropriate. 1,400? <laughs> <laughs> no. And the appropriate answer I mean, would be? 14 months old. No. <laughs> oh, no! Now that's highly inappropriate. No. It's double inappropriate! <laughs> Let's just say he was her first attraction in the opposite sex. Oh, my God. I found her demanding certain things of him, and I told her mother. Oh, well, then her mother would know also. Yeah, that doesn't help. We need something much. her mother wouldn't know. Yeah. Uh, she looks really confused at that. Her dead mother? Why would it matter? It, it uh, well, not so much just the mother. I don't. I want to try to give away as little as possible, basically. Uh, but just something that only the two of you would know, that no one else could have... Because po- her mother knew maybe she told someone else, right? Like, I need to know something only you and she would know. Hmm. She thinks for a minute and says, well, this is not known uh, by even her family. Uh, (laughs) Her highness likely still has a bit of a light-fingered nature about her. She would often steal things from the staff, from visitors. Um, She kind of glances at Tristan when she says this. (laughs) (laughs) Much like your assassin. No. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> as far as I know, no one else knows about this. We were partners in crime at one time where I would distract her target and she would lift the object. If she still has those objects, they would be in a small box beneath the fourth stone beneath her bed. She kept them there as prizes. Could you tell us an object that's in that box? Hmm. A small golden knife comes to memory. This was from a a dignitary's son um, that passed by. She wanted it, and she got it, as she often does. It's a small knife, not a blade, not longer than a few inches. Uh, The blade itself is gold. Very unusual, very useless knife. Okay. That's super helpful, right, everyone? Like, yeah. thank you. Yeah. 
Is there anything else? Because apparently I'm going to be spending the rest of my day trying to find out every traveler who purchased fare aboard all the ships that pass through um, the city. I actually have a, a quick question. Uh, did you know any of the fishermen or fisherwomen in Garotten? In Garotten. Uh, yes. Well, the merchants, I know most of them. Uh, they unload cargo here. We send cargo there. Um, yes. Are you familiar with a pretty influential fisherman who passed away very suddenly? Hmm. Do you know anything about him? Um, she thinks about it. How long ago? Word doesn't... Usually the merchants uh, have seasons. Uh, our, our season has just started. If this was recent, uh, then... It wasn't recent. This was this was maybe three months ago, I believe. What did he die of? Apparently something really terrible. Uh, there was a house in Garotten that was labeled the Hell House. That okay. there were yeah. um, major... Yeah. All right. Anyone who's character is paying attention make me a wisdom check okay i invoke the hell house i Gosh, am one darn away it. from my wisdom where's my button damn it just darn it low success yep four ten okay did anybody make a high success like a success more than 10 but under there yes oh more than 10 no i'm more one, than I'm 10 one. but under there no nobody all right. Um, Can I reroll? <laughs> it, it's up to you. I'm gonna try to reroll. I really want to get this one. Oh my god, I'm done. <laughs> I quit. I quit the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, don't go. <laughs> I quit. I'm out. Oh no. Okay. Um, I learned nothing. She nothing. answers quickly. Uh, no, I, I know nothing of that. Okay. Um. What? But wasn't so meta table talk real quickly. That wasn't her real parents that died. That little girl, though, we didn't weren't. Wasn't there a shipwreck that she was a part of that she showed up with? The little yeah, girl I'm not there? asking about her. I'm not asking about the girl. Oh, see, I'm thinking. I'm thinking we might be able to find out who her parents are if this lady we might, knows. We might, but she has to know him first because we still don't know why he died. We still don't know why. Like, and if she knows why he was murdered, then potentially she could lead us to who her parents are gotcha you're you're trying to solve him i'm not I was mentioning the girl, the girl. Gotcha, i'm not mentioning gotcha. the girl to, to her i'm not mentioning so, the girl to her so i wasn't going to mention the girl but i think i am going to bring up like so do you know of any do you know of any people uh, with the time frame of of the the girl that shipwreck that the girl showed up like do you know of any seafaring travelers whose like families were all lost at sea around this time you no know, i'm and sure they... i don't i don't listen to such rumors uh please i have a lot to do uh, her okay. highness has given me an impossible task that i would like to start as soon as possible okay well you've been a great help and maybe what we do could relieve you of your burden if we can solve things first so it's it's hand that in hand. i would be interested in well that's how to contact of... me Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> uh, where are you staying Falco? Where are you staying? Oh. <laughs> what what is your charisma? My charisma is an 18. <laughs> oh wow. Uh okay, I'm gonna take it just how you said it. And she says, I have my lodgings here upstairs. Perhaps after dinner you'd be allowed to see it. But for Ooh. now I have work. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Mama. All right. <laughs> okay, Mama. Okay, Mama. Bruno's just like, all right. <laughs> no better use for magic eye that you can think of. <laughs> okay. Yep. We let her go about her business. It's to say we leave. <laughs> we don't let yeah. her go about her business while we stand there watching her. <laughs> Back to the highness, I guess, right? Well, I would quite like to see the murder scene, just to, you know, see if you did. We didn't see the murder scene of the first one, did nope. you? No. Mm, so no, we're not we didn't. Be able to we only heard any similarities. Um, additionally, we now have this new suspect potentially, this scorned stable boy potentially, who could have been. I don't know who could be. No. We don't think so. I, mean, I I think the stable boy who was 
there is just a poor servant who got caught in the crossfire and is although okay. he did get fired so. like he lost his job that that would make somebody pissed that, off i guess that probably means he's dead i he don't think earn a living. i do think that <laughs> it's not the mother that's in the daughter i kind of think it might be the father because the father was already exhumed you know his corpse is already dealt with and I doubt that anybody's in there. I mean, you heard how, what a bad girl she was when she was a child. And she said she started drinking more heavily, which means she was drinking even before. Yeah. So I think it's just taking a toll on her that her parents are dead. That's fair. I think I think due diligence is we know the souls are, are maybe gone, so we might as well check, right? Yes. No, I agree that we should check, but I'm not putting a heavy yeah, no, on I'm this. Not putting if all my I were an assassin, in that boat. This is not a thing that I would allow to happen. If, if you were. If. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We should look for that box, though. Hmm. Uh -huh. Media. <laughs> we're investigating the murder. We desperately need to see your secret pile of stolen objects. Well, I mean, we know stuff that's in there, and so if we if we can ask her the questions, we probably don't need the box. Oh man. Okay, um, yeah. but um, what if the souls are in the box? Where are you Do guys we heading? Think she did it because that's the only way they'd be in there, really. Worth a shot to check. Uh, I think we should check the murder yeah. scenes. All right, so you're heading back to the castle. <clears throat> yeah, because we're gonna all, everything points back there, anyways. So, uh, did uh, did Oak say he's gonna be right back? Because <laughs> it's rather unfortunate. <laughs> oh no, we better get attacked. Chat? Um, he did not that I saw. Let okay. me check. Say anything. Well, we'll go on with it. Hopefully, he'll come back to his seat soon. So, you guys are heading back to the castle. Um, you asked to see which room, uh, the the Baron or the Baroness. Look at the I want to see all three. I want to ask if we can investigate well, all three. Uh, you absolutely will not be allowed to investigate Her Highness's room. It has nothing to do with the murders, you're told, um, and mm -hmm. you are forbidden to see her room. Well, can we see the no, one suspicious. where there is the least disturbance, first of all? Least uh, disturbance would current. be the Baroness's because it just happened yeah. this morning. Uh, so, so Fairwind's room. First, I guess. Uh, she does have a separate room from the Baron. Uh, it's they have an adjoining uh, door between. Uh, you notice that the door is <laughs> oddly you can bar from one side or the other. <laughs> um, so uh, her room has been left uh, since this morning when they found her. Uh, you can see that like so no one no servants come in to clean. Um, there actually have been guards posted outside until her war council was being held. Oh, good. Oak's back. Sorry. <laughs> um, all right, let's go on with this scene first and then we'll, I'll, I'll do what I, I, uh, what happened with my roles there. So you're in the room, you know, you're checking it out. Everything looks, you know, it's undisturbed. You don't see any signs of struggle. She was found in her bed. Uh, the sheets are still, you know, other than having to pull the body out, they were just left as they were. Uh, there is no window in this room, uh, but there are a lot of candelabras and uh, mirrors and uh, brass that's meant to reflect the light to make the room brighter since there's no direct sunlight otherwise. So she's Start, like, dead moving in candelabras. her bed. She's found dead in her bed. Well, Start, like, have... tilting oh, there is, candelabras. <laughs> there is a fireplace as well. Uh, and it's a room fireplace, so it, it's it's fairly small. It's just meant to heat the room. It's not like you can, you know, like cook a hog in it or anything. It's just a very small fireplace and a very small flue. Like a, a person could not fit through that chimney. Even a child couldn't fit through that chimney. I actually do start moving all the candelabras. Okay. Like just um, very gently trying to see if I can lift them. That's all. Sure. Uh, you lift them just to make sure they're not attached to a secret mm -hmm. passage or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You go around and you just lift up all the candelabras you see. Uh, you're not seeing anything. But while you're doing that, what is everyone else doing? Um, I like where you're thinking with the candelabras and the secret things. I'm going to try to detect like secret doors and walk like, but, but not the candelabras. Like anything seems in the walls. Sure. Um, what race is your character again? 
Uh, elf. Elf. I think you have a bonus to detect secret. I do. Yeah. yeah. It's um. I think it's like a two and six. Let me double check. I know I have it written down. Uh, one in se- one in six uh, chance to notice secret doors when passing within ten feet. Two in six when you're searching. Chance to yeah. when searching. Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead and you're searching. So go ahead and give me a roll there. Okay. What's uh Dion? What's NPC doing? I'm gonna look under the bed. Okay, you're just gonna drop and look under the bed. All right. Yeah. Uh, there's I'm actually a re-roll, so. there's actually a chest, a long, flat and not very tall chest that goes underneath almost the entire bed. If you open it, um, it's, it's just a simply a place where her clothing is kept. So there are like nightgowns and things like that in there. So you're reading through that. The, are there windows in here? There are no windows in here. Okay. All right. So, Frendon, did you get it on a reroll? You got a two. I did get it on the reroll. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Richard, what is Tristan doing? Tristan is going to go and have a look at the fireplace. Mm-hmm. Wonder if there's something in there that could have been like, oh, nice. this log burns down and something gets <clears throat> activated in the night. So, you're going to just kind of grab one of the pokers and just going to go through the embers. There was yep. a fire in here, it's burned down. Uh, so, you do have some smoking coals left. Uh, you do find some papers were burned in here, some vellum. So there's still little bits of it in there that haven't completely burned, but very little. But something, some papers were burned in here. Uh, fiber. So what are you doing? There are no windows, so that's what I was going to look at. Is there a leftover food or anything from the previous night? Drink? There, there is a wine glass by the bedside that is uh, got just a little swish left in the bottom. Um, there is, uh, there's a bedpan, uh, so you used to heat, you know, heat the, the mattresses and such, uh, off to the side, but there's no other food, uh, or any other beverages or anything like that around. Okay. Does the wine smell like wine or anything smell off? It smells like wine. Okay. All right. I'll just taste that little, last little bit. I'm going to taste it. All right. It tastes like good wine. Uh, a little sweet for you. Okay. It tastes like good wine. Friend Drone Wolf did find um, it's so you're going along the walls. The walls are it's stone, but there's been some woodwork put in place just to kind of give the place less of a castle feel to it. Mm. And you do find that the panels all run um, vertically. You do find that you push on a piece of this paneling and a gap that's no more than two feet wide open up. And it looks like this is a passageway between rooms. So, like, to go through it, you'd have to stand sideways, and there's still not Mm -hmm. a lot of room. But, yeah, you find a passage. Uh, When you open it, though, you notice there's a lot of, like, cobwebs and dirt and dust everywhere. And you don't see – it does not look like it's been disturbed in a very long time. Okay. I found a secret doohickey. You had the right idea there with the candelabras but you know doesn't look disturbed i mean worst case maybe if we need to abscond we use it and then i put the panel back okay is there anything else you want to do in this room uh your move you've moved all the candelabras odette you've actually moved even like little knickknacks that are around that look like they might you know maybe they trigger something nothing does wait where did the secret door go to don't know where it went. We just know it goes between rooms, so we'd have to investigate it further. We totally should, because if it goes to her room, I definitely want to find that box. But who knows? Or, you know, could be some good eavesdropping. Mm-hmm. How about Stealthy Guy, who's definitely not an assassin? Tristan, do you want to maybe squeeze through there? I mean, you could maybe, like, assassinate those cobwebs, even though you're not a murderer. Dignify that with a reply. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I can, if we think it's important. I mean, I have found burned things in the fireplace as well. I don't know if anybody oh. can... I don't know how burned they are, whether we can make out any of the words on it or not, but... Yeah, you rescue what you can. It, uh, unfortunately, it's been it burned uh, all night and through the morning. So there's you, there's nothing that yeah. you can. There's no writing left. It's just you can see that something was burned in the fireplace. Hmm. What about the quality of the paper? Can we tell it's, that? It's Does high it quality vellum. Cool? Yeah, it's high quality vellum. This is pretty rich stuff. Hmm. Okay. 
So either burning a diary or correspondence between two rich people or something. Hmm. Well, interesting. Yeah. Do we do we want to just move on then and go to the next room, or do we want to check out the secret dealer? Let's check out the secret deli. All right. Good with that. All right. Uh, well, Richard, if your character goes in, um, again, you have, to, uh, you have to go kind of sideways. It's really tight, but there isn't enough room for you. And it's a long corridor that, again, goes between each rooms. And there's, there's no uh, – the only exit is on the other end. Um, and this room – or it, it opens up into the hallway at the end of the room. But what you do notice is as you're passing by each of the rooms – it seems that the stones are, there's either less stones or the stones are hollow because you can hear everything that's going on in the rooms as you're going by. There's no holes that you can look in, but you can definitely, you could spy on a conversation that was going on in those rooms. All right, I'll come back and just tell everybody. And no, I didn't pick out any interesting conversations, I'm afraid. Okay. Unless you're interested in what the butlers was doing. All right, so let's get this in before our session ends for tonight. Oak, you took the worst time to walk away from the microphone. Sorry. <laughs> so, I was like, I couldn't hold it anymore. I needed to refill and do empty the No tank. problem. You <laughs> you leave this room, um, and as you're going to the next room, the Baron's room, um, Oak, your character happens to look out one of the parapet windows, and uh, you see there's a merchant wagon uh, that's loaded up, um, it looks like they're taking away probably the castle's laundry to be cleaned. And the person who's leading uh, the horse sitting on the wagon is whipping the horse looks up at you just at that moment. It's Tullish. He's disguised. He's, he's got a fake mustache and beard on. He's wearing peasant's clothes. But he looks up at you and it's just the perfect angle that Fiber sees and understands who it is. So I rolled for each of you guys as you were coming towards the castle. Um, Fiber uh, rolled a two. Two <laughs> percent. So Fiber saw through the disguise. Now, does he see us though? He, look, he, he catches your eye as you're looking through the parapet. Uh, and now, definitely it's, it's a, a, it's a wagon of laundry, correct? Yes. Is it below us? It is below you. I yell, there he is! And I pull my two-handed sword and I leap off. <laughs> you leap through the window. Hey. Yeah, I, I figured you might. Um, I'm going to follow. <laughs> I'm totally and following. As, it, How as I'm going going through the air as I'm falling, I, I just focus my willpower and I'm like, drop to the ground! And I'm trying to make him submit. Okay. And, Two things. Uh, you're several stories up. <laughs> you fine. you can do what you described. That's perfectly fine. But you're not going to land well. That's fine. Or you can choose to land well and not be able to do the command. Mm. Okay. Yeah. No, I'll land well because I'd rather get a hold of him with my sword than my mind. All right. Okay. Uh, first of all. Because I don't have much of one. Make a dex check. Uh, let's see if you actually leap far. Well, actually, you know what? Make a strength check first. So let's see if you actually can leap far enough to land in the laundry. Strength. Yeah, if you want to do that. Mm -hmm. One of 16. Low success, so you're on target. Okay, now roll a dex check. This is how much, okay, how well it's going to absorb the fall. Did you make it? Or uh, miss it? That is, I missed by three. I got a, wait, wait, dex check. No, I got a 15. Okay, so you 15 make it. dex. All right, so give me a second here. So D6 for 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay, you're going to take half damage from this. You do hit the cart. Oh, wow. Uh, so, well, half damage. So you're going to take five points. Okay. Uh, you're, leap you're leaping from, like, basically a fourth story window <laughs> right out. Uh, but you do hit the laundry cart. You okay. land in it. It breaks your fall somewhat. But that is going to be your turn. Uh, cool. Now, Dion, you said you followed right after? Once you said it was multiple stories, uh, NPC, <laughs> she kind of goes up to the windowsill after he jumps, stops, looks down. <laughs> Four stories is what? Like how many feet? 40, 40 feet. 10. Yeah, 40, 40 feet. feet. Or 40 um, feet. Is there like a torch nearby? 
Sure, yeah, they're torches. It set me on fire. <laughs> no, I, I, honestly, uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Not you specifically, but the whole wagon. Yeah, I'm landing that, that in the laundry in. on the Yeah, wagon. he landed yeah, you'll in the be back. Fine. You'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of... Uh, short bow is what range? It's... Oh, well within 40 feet. Okay, yeah. I'm going to take a pot shot with the short bow. Why not? I can fire twice. So. Okay, so you're going to shoot at Tellish. Yeah, I'm going to scream out the window, Stop that merchant! If it helps at all with Dion's action, I was immediately, as soon as I heard this, like, Oh, couple stories. Sleep, motherfucker. Sleep, sleep, sleep. So <laughs> just bear that in mind, too. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, Dion said he was acting first. I'm going to give Dion at the window first. Uh, go ahead and make me two attack rolls, Dion. All right, and what range is that considered? Probably no additional modifier. Uh, is it a longbow or a short bow? Oh wait, it's a short bow. You oh, said. Oh no, it's... yeah, that's it's it's a little bit over forty feet since it's forty feet down. So short range is seventy feet, right? So then, yeah, okay, you're within short. So plus one, right? Yep. Go yeah. ahead. Let. All right, no damage modifier. That misses. Uh. It's a dirty 20. Uh, so what does that hit? Okay. Uh, one point of damage. Or no, excuse me. Five points of damage. One of your arrows hits true. Gets them high up in the uh, shoulder, left shoulder. Nice. All right. So Grown Wolf said something next. So when you come to the yep. window, you're crowding it within PC. What do you want to do? I look over NPC and I'm like, oh, I see what's happening. Sleep, 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 sleep. <laughs> <And I> just... <laughs> All right. So um, because of how close everything is, you're going to yeah. catch fiber in this. That's fair. Yeah. I don't think. You... Wait, hold on. Let me make and sure. I'm, I'm probably going to be lower level than him. So I'll go to sleep. He won't. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Let me make sure you can't direct sleep in this version at one target. I don't think I you think can. It's still, I think it's just it's area. It's AOE. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so roll for how many hit dice it affects. Or can he target it ahead of him where he's caught on the edge of the effect? You know what? I've always used the rule that magic users see the world in five-foot grids. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I'm fine with that. You'll catch okay. you'll catch Telish in his horse. Okay. But the horse will suck uh, hit dice. Not a bad roll. A little all right. about average all the way through. Let me just check something real quick here. I didn't realize there was a horse, otherwise I would have cast Animal Friendship on it. <laughs> Run away, horse! <laughs> when you said he was pulling a laundry cart, I assumed he like was carrying it himself. Like, yeah. yeah. I didn't think there was a horse Ooh, actually, um, You still have a turn coming up. So. What what level is Grown Wolf? Two. Okay, you're just within range then, so you could hit it at 50 feet. Okay. Yeah. Um, Okay, sorry, I just have to look at something here. Uh, four plus. Roll a D2 minus one. Okay, doing it now. One. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, uh, wow, you sleep him. <laughs> you actually do. Yes, could have grabbed the yeah. motherfucker. Wow, I no, did not expect that. No, we that. got questions. <laughs> I did not expect that. All right, so yeah, uh, his horse uh, and he falls slump over across the buckboard of the the wagon and we're right at time uh well actually let's just go let's finish the round is there something odette wanted to do i wanted to animal friendship the horse but the horse is asleep now yeah, so i don't think asleep. i can okay um, <laughs> um go ahead anything else uh i'm just picturing everybody with their head like, like bunched up around this window like pointing fingers and stuff i like to try and find my way down quickly sure uh you find the stairs and just go down uh, start i take the out. stairs sure i take the stairs uh, it's either that or jump out of a window <laughs> so. that's okay no, thank you uh richard is there anything tristan wants to do i reveal it was me all along and <laughs> Grand wolf out the window as he's the one <laughs> that's uh, no, I'm, I got I'm busy gloating and you just <laughs> he's actually got the name badge that says tristan not the assassin then he flips it the assassin <laughs> 
Incredible. Nice. Nah, I got nothing. I'm, All right. Well, wow. I I did not expect you guys to be able to stop him. He's a really high level character, but hey, that's how the dice roll. So we'll end it there for the night. You have slept Tellish. Uh, he did not make it out of the castle. Grown Wolf is not Grown Wolf. Sorry, Thiber is the one who spotted his ingenious disguise. Yeah. Here's that son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, let's sign out for the night then. Let's start with Oak. Oak, you got anything you want to plug? Anything coming up for you? Yeah, you can catch me Friday and Saturday nights starting midnight playing some D&D 5e, uh, both of them homebrews, one of them standard, and I run my uh, Grim Dark on Saturday nights with a bastardized version of 5e. You can catch that on Twitch and YouTube, Urience, U-R-A-E-N-C-E. That's where I'm at. Nice. Uh, Richard? Hi, I'm Richard, and when two people kiss, they make a 60-foot hose that starts with an anus and ends with an anus. And you can find me on twitch.tv at lmtdtmffr, where I play video games. Richard, dropping dropping info for us there. Yeah, yeah. Oof. <laughs> Dion, you got anything? Uh, substance is used on Twitch. I stream gaming, and throughout the week, I play a lot of D and D. Tuesdays and Wednesdays on Steam Steel Murder. Thursdays on Frendens Channel. Saturday, April third, Silence in the Library, a fifth edition campaign, is starting on Fulsham underscore Art, and I'm in that. So yeah. Nice, Jen. Uh, my name is Jen. You can find me on Twitch TV slash Nintendo playing Animal Crossing every morning. And that's kind of all I do other than other games that I play in that other people have already mentioned. Friendin. Hey, I'm Friendin. Twitch.tv slash me, Friendin. And uh, I draw stuff for tabletop pretty much every day of the week. Sometimes with Jen helping me also. Uh, and uh, we, Jen and I are also in a, another game, another couple games. Um, free leagues on Sundays and Featherfall tabletop on just about every Monday at this point. We're missing a few, but Featherfall TT and Free League, you can check us there. Nice. And I'm Bert Bizlab on the inner tubes. Uh, I'm here on this channel Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Uh, first edition Dungeons and Dragons on Tuesdays. Usually BX Dungeons and Dragons on Fridays. This week it's going to be a just a fun game, a one shot, maybe Weird Frontiers using the DCC system. Uh, Sunday is Shadowrun using the uh, using a PBTA system, and of course check the podcast out at Blue Magic B L U M A G I K dot com. And I think that's all, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for those in the chat. Uh, Have a good night. We all had fun. Say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.